uh, you know, we both have kids. Your kids are a little older, um, so I don't know how more, how much more immediate your concerns are for them. Like, you know, I don't know. Like, uh, you know, the, there's the stuff you can take care of. You know, giving your kid a loving home, making sure they have food and shelter and that stuff, and you know, supporting them and doing all those things. And uh, uh, yeah, it's. Um, I mean, this seems like I'm saying something not for the kids, but for their parents. Like, but only to sympathize and say, like, and it can feel like maybe it's not enough. Like, maybe they won't be well equipped to go out into the world. Like, I, I don't know uh, what that is. I, you know, I mentioned before about the stoic stuff. Um, uh, it's really. Uh, um, like it's interesting, you know. We have the lighting and the camera and all the stuff, and you know, uh, there's stuff. Like our lives are filled with stuff, and it's very easy to be in an inquisitive mode, even if you are not an inquisitive person. You think of yourself like I'm not super materialistic. Like you know, like you know, I'm not going to galas or whatever in my mind are like the kinds of you know fancy life that someone would want to have. But like we all have a bunch of stuff, and it can seem hard. And so you know, there's like a whole sort of stoic thing that I imagine uh, thinking about, about, like, what you don't need. Do you know, have you ever read, like, William James's Varieties of Religious Experience? And it's fine if you haven't, like, but I'm teaching a uh, fourth year seminar on it. Um, uh, I think it'll, like, figure more prominently in, uh, like, chapters of it. Yeah, the, I mean, the chapter, it's misleading, that I just taught was on saintliness. And it's really actually a chapter in many ways about asceticism. Because saintliness, like one of the features of the book is about distinguishing something like what can seem to be, and he's willing to say is close to religious orientation is just a purely moral orientation to the world and giving yourself over to good causes and these kinds of things. But he thinks like that he seems to see how that could look a lot like a religious kind of life, but at, in other ways it probably won't. So St. Louis is an interesting case of where he's like going to draw certain distinctions because there'll be things tied into it. But, you know, extreme kinds of poverty and ways of, because there's this, St. Louis has this uh, otherworldly dimension and some of that seems to come about from from just say uh, righteousness or goodness or something, probably from a certain ascetic dimension. Uh, James doesn't put it that way, but I think that's a th like the distinguishing the purely moral from the religious is a theme of the book, and it comes out in that context in a in a kind of life. And the chapter itself like uh, goes into all the darkness of the techniques one could have of you know. Um, you know, uh, mortification of the flesh and other things that, you know, like, could be so disturbing and everything else. But like, it's actually, it's just interesting to think about managing your uh, relationship to the world. And like, what, like, so all those things are self-inflicted sufferings, to go back to the beginning of this stuff. And like, it's interesting how you manage these different wants and desires and that you have. So. I don't know, like, it's, uh, I mean, this is not exactly your question, but, like, when you say, like, things, concerns I have for students, they really come out. Quite often, like, in a lot of my teaching, I think a lot that these are someone's, uh, this is, like, you know, someone's son or daughter or whatever, like, these kinds of, this is someone's child, and I have, like, these thoughts about my own daughter and equipping her to get through life in, yeah, I mean, her material well-being in all the confused ways that that's involved, but also her emotional and psychological well-being. And uh, I'm not sure how we equip people to do that. So uh, I do have concerns for young people. I don't know if any of that was helpful except to say, yeah, like my heart goes out to them and I really wish yeah, there was something uh, more, but then that's when I go back to my earlier point that, like, you know, sometimes it's just enough to try to teach a decent course and be fair with them and honest and give them good feedback and help them think through problems but not be a therapist or not be uh, a guru or someone who can solve all these other problems. So I find myself torn between those things. I don't know if you have that too, but, like, 
I would like, I wish there's some way to do more that both fit my own uh, capabilities and personality. And then I think that those thoughts themselves are so utterly unreasonable that I could provide any of that. And that like, I have any training at all, having done a PhD to do those things, it's, they're completely out of whack with each other, so.